224, the curl of E. This is our last stop before we get to the electric potential. Um, the, the problem he poses here is, he says, let's figure out what the curl of E is, and we're not going to use just our eye. I mean, it should be, it should be fairly obvious why the curl is going to be zero, um, just by thinking about how electric fields behave. So let's start with a, a simple uh, point charge. E vector is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. The charge over the distance squared in the direction of the distance. Now, um, it should be pretty obvious why the curl of that field is going to be zero. Um, you know, if you wanted to curl, if you go back to the definition of the curl, which is basically this, so the curl is the determinant of I vector or i hat, j hat, k hat, all over d by dx. And then um, e x, e y, e z, right? And so basically your direction in the i hat is going to be the derivative with respect to some other uh, direction. Um, minus the other derivative in the other direction. And all of them basically the derivative of two different directions, of derivative in one direction of something going in the opposite direction, so anything per perpendicular. This obviously has no perpendicular lines, nothing here. You don't have the electric field increasing like to the right as you get farther away from the center. So obviously it should be zero, but we're gonna walk through a simple proof of this that kind of helps you um, imagine what's gonna happen. So suppose that we had, um, you know, we had a point charge here, and we wanted to go from point A to some other point B, and I'll kind of stick to the picture they have in the book, and, you know, following some path, it does not matter what path we follow, okay? And spherical coordinates, um, the integral from A to B of the E vector dot with the DL vector. Remember, the DL vector is that, is tiny lines, tiny segments along this path to move from one point to the other. And the E dot DL part um, well, what's DL? In spherical coordinates, DL is equal to um, dr in the r-hat direction, plus, and I should have left more room for this, r d theta in the theta direction. And finally, we have um, the r sine theta d phi in the phi direction, r in the phi direction. Okay, so we don't have any components that move in the theta or phi direction. So the dot product is just going to be this dr times the magnitude of the e vector. So let's rewrite that way. So we get the integral from a to b of um, the e vector, the magnitude of the e vector times dr. And so the magnitude is basically everything but that r hat, right? So we get the integral from a to b Let's pull out this 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Let's pull out the Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, actually. Let's get, let's get the charge out of there, too. So we get Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, because the charge isn't varying, um, depending on where we are on the path. And so we're left with this R squared term, dr over R squared. And evaluating that integral, we get um, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, um, negative 1 over R evaluated between points A and B. So basically we just get, you know, Q over four pi epsilon naught of one over the distance to point A from the, from the point and one over the distance to B from that point charge. And so clearly this is an integral. It does not depend on what path you take, you know. Um, none of this integral, it only takes into account, into account the endpoints. And so, um, applying Stokes' theorem, well, let's, let's start with this. So the circle integral of E vector dot DL for this single point charge is always going to be equal to zero, which, um, according to Stokes' theorem, that's supposed to be equal to the curl of E vector um, dot DA, I believe, yes, of the surface that that, of some surface that that's the boundary conditions for. And so here we have the obvious conclusion that the curl of the electric field is zero. That's the only way that could be true for any surface that it's always zero is, it's, is uh, that the curl is always zero. 
Um, now, he goes on to further, you know, solidify his proof by saying that although we did this for one point charge, the electric field follows the principle of superposition. And so it doesn't matter how many point charges you have or how those point charges are spread around. Um, you can take each electric field due to each point charge independently. The curl of each is zero, so the curl of all of them summed together is also zero thanks to distributive property of the curl. So we, we basically prove in somewhat too rigorously or actually in a roundabout way that the curl of the electric field is zero. Now we could also, I'm just going to do this to satisfy my own curiosity. Hopefully you're curious as well. In spherical coordinates, the curl is defined by the curl of E is going to be defined by this complicated expression, 1 over R sine theta d by d theta and then that's sine of theta and the e in the phi direction which is 0 um, minus d by d phi of e in the theta direction which is also 0 and that's going to be in the r hat direction plus 1 over r of 1 over sine theta of d by d phi of e in the r direction minus d by dr of r times e in the phi direction which is zero and that's in the theta hat direction plus one over r one over sine theta d oh i did this wrong um, forget the sine theta here. D by dr. I'm copying and looking back forth and I made a mistake. R in the e theta direction, which is 0, minus d by d theta of e in the r direction. And that's in the phi hat direction. Okay, so um, it's not entirely obvious on first glance why this is all 0, but let's walk through it anyway. So e theta is 0. E phi is also zero, E phi is zero, and so all these terms are that zero, that zero, that zero, that zero, because the derivative of zero is always zero. And so now we're left with the derivative with respect to phi of E r and derivative with respect to theta of E r. Well, let's write out that equation one more time. So E vector is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught cubed by r squared in the r hat direction. All right? So there's no theta and there's no phi here, so the derivative with respect to theta and phi of this function is also zero. So this is zero and this is zero. So every one of these six cross terms is all zero. And so just by calculating it out, it's zero. And um, so, uh, you know, we, we can go the long way of, of going backwards through the back door through Stokes' theorem, or we can just, you know, take the curl of it and either way it's zero. So everything makes sense and everything's good. Thanks for your time. Bye.